we would like to welcome you as the latest recruit to TetraCorp's mining franchise program, opening up unknown sectors of space to enterprise and exploitation. Since 2221, TetraCorp has been proud to serve the extraction industry, working with pioneers in the deepest, most dangerous territories of the universe. By undertaking this perilous but necessary work, you have become a part of TetraCorp's illustrious industrial history. Perhaps you might call nearly 300 years of industrial injury and death, low pay and wretched conditions illustrious. Perhaps you might be proud of a record of systematically exploiting workers of all races. And During the Imperial era to equip the then Imperial fleet, Tetracorp flourished under the whole of the Salaria dynasty. Our earliest endeavors were undertaken in conditions even more hazardous than those faced by today's miners. Full-scale war. As time passed and the Empire was replaced by the Federation, the struggle for supremacy passed from the bloody battlefield of interspecies conflict to the more productive arena of commercial competition. Terran aggression was not responsible for all alien mortality during the last three centuries. Only for 68% of it. Much of that is due to big companies, the mega corporations as they are known now. Trade war is as deadly as any other kind. Corp is proud to serve those who, regardless of the current political situation, have continued to risk their lives to keep the industrial wars fed with the raw materials they need to maintain the highest quality of life for all the peoples of the Federation, to keep the dream alive. It is now your privilege to share in the achievement of that dream. Welcome to the fragmented sectors. Welcome to Tetracorp. I just love that intro. Hello and welcome to another Let's Play by me, Axian. And as you probably could tell by that intro, we are in the future. Now, this is a game that came out in uh, 1996 and uh, was published by um, let's see, Kaiji Software or Entertainment, I forget which, but and developed by uh, Gremlin Interactive. It is, in my opinion, one of the best space strategies games ever. It is a, an open-ended 4X strategy game where we are working for a uh, mega corporation called Tetracorp. And it is our job to uh, colonize a sector of space known as the Fragmented Sectors. There are no planets and no stars, only asteroids. And uh, we need to start making mining colonies and mine out ore, sell it back to the Federation for a profit so that we can keep on expanding and building and uh, doing other stuff. Um, Several things I like about this game. One of them is that it is it isn't purely based around the whole building up bases and m making money and uh, selling ore, buying ore and doing all of that. Um, but you can play the entire game doing only that. And uh, since that is my favorite part of the game, I tend to do that quite a bit. If you want to make lots of wars and have a good war or two, you can do that as well. And uh, it, it's uh, pretty well detailed as well. And one of the best things about this game, which is one of the reasons why it is still one of my most favorite games of all times, is the diplomatic system. This game has a 
I would say a revolutionary system in in its way. I mean, it could have been be done better, certainly for today. It could have been done better, but even today, most of the games where you have a diplomacy system don't even come close to the quality of the diplomacy system of this game. And the AI is pretty good as well, as far as the diplomacy bit goes. So, those are a few of the reasons why I just love this game. And uh, I'm doing this Let's Play um, mainly because of two people. One of them is a person who enjoys older games. And uh, he has done various Let's Plays of older games. He's got them on his channel. You can go check those out. It's uh, Grimmeth Jack Reaper. And uh, here on YouTube, you can find him on the channel Grimmeth R. With a capital R at the end. Um, because he hadn't played this game. He didn't know about it. So I'm hoping to show you, Grimmeth. Hope, I hope you're watching this. Because if you're not, I'm going to hunt you down and ram at least this first video down your throat until you've watched it in its entire day. Um, but yeah, I, I want to show him a great game which he has apparently missed for some odd reason. <laughs> um, but also for a YouTuber who... Um, <laughs> um, I introduced this game to him during one of his live streams. He tried it and he failed miserably and it was quite hilarious and enjoyable to watch. So um, I appreciated that bit of entertainment. <laughs> it was fun watching it and uh, it, it was quite the reminder of how I did my first game as well. So just building lots of random stuff and watching it all deteriorate. <laughs> And um, those would be Mr. Hassan. And um, since I've introduced this game to him already, this Let's Play is also going to be a bit of a tutorial for him and everyone else who would like to play this game. This game is an abandonware, so it's free to download uh, from any abandonware site that has this game on it. Uh, I tried to download one of those and it worked. I played it and it was awesome. The problem was that I don't know uh, the quality of all of it, but um, where I downloaded it, there was a few stuff missing from the actual game. The intro wasn't there and uh, uh, all the uh, spoken dialogue was also gone, so that was a bit of a shame, and I originally recorded about an hour where I played on that, and um, I, I didn't like it. There was just too many awesome things from the game missing, so um, I uh, rummaged through all of my stuff for about an hour or two, and finally found my old CD for this game and uh, decided to install from that. So that is why you could enjoy that beautiful and, for me, very nostalgic introduction. And it is also the reason why you will be uh, treated to uh, hearing people in diplomacy screens and whatnot actually speak to us, instead of just having to read the text. I think that's about it for the introduction, so without further ado, let's go into game options and see... Mouse speed is at maximum and it's still not really all that fast. I don't know if you can tell or not, but I'm moving my mouse quite vigorously at the moment and it's uh, responding, uh, well, good enough, I guess. Sound which is what I need you guys to comment on, if it's too loud or not loud enough. Speech volume can't be any higher, but all the other stuff can be a bit higher, as you can see. It can also be lowered, if you think it's too loud. And time. Now, we can do this in slow, fast, or average speed. Now, 
for me, I usually play at the slow speed. The difference is in how intense the micromanaging is. Um, at a fast pace, you're going to start building up your first colony rather quickly and you won't have to sit around and wait for it to be done. Uh, so that can be a bonus there. But as you get further and further into the game, you might want to change it to average or slow because when you start having 40, 50 colonies and you're going to need to micromanage most of them, you're not going to need to micromanage all of them, fortunately enough. Um, it does, however, tend to be quite hectic at times, especially if you choose to have time on in menus, which is something I strongly advise against. Uh, because you're going to need that pause when you're playing. But we're going to go for fast so I can build up the colonies quick enough and start showing you all of the awesome stuff in the game. There's also quite a bit of backstory to the game, which we will discover once we get into it. So, with the options done, we're going to start a new game, we're going to go for a custom game. And uh, I've already set this one up. We have a large arena size with a high asteroid density, a peaceful atmosphere because I... Um, mostly because I'm not really that good at the whole combat tactics war thingy in this game. I usually wait until the very end of the game when I'm bored with the session I'm in or game that I'm in, the save file call it what you will, and, uh, and then I just go all out military and have a good war <laughs> and have lots and lots and lots of fun with it. Um, another thing you can do, which is also rather fun, is um, you can actually put engines on your uh, asteroids and uh, tell them to smash into other asteroids. That can also be rather fun, and I hope to be able to showcase that too as this Let's Play goes along. Um, we have all the alien cultures here, which is also one of the reasons I want a peaceful atmosphere and not that many wars. Mm, because all of these different races have uh, different personalities. The Regalians, for instance, they are rather peaceful and cooperative. They won't really bother you until you've bothered them. Um, I don't remember all of them. I think the Mikotage are somewhere in the middle. They, they might be hostile on, say, neutral or aggressive atmosphere. I don't think they will be on peaceful. Uh, Bercasia, I believe they are rather hostile. So having it on peaceful is a good idea if you have them in the game. We've got Artemia, which I don't remember anything about. Mana. Um, as you may remember from the intro, there was a signing of a treaty to make sort of a federation type thingy and uh, you know, outline uh, basically cooperation between all of the races and I believe the Mona have not signed that treaty and um, they're also black market traders or considered thus since they haven't you know signed the treaty and all uh, so it's always fun to have them in the game because uh, you can if there's one of the races you don't like you can accuse them of trading with Mona and um, you, you can spread that around to all of the other races and possibly incite a war. <laughs> <laughs> it's always fun being a warmonger, right? And Archaean, I don't really remember much about either, but um, we'll get into that as we get into the game. So, let's start it up. And we find ourselves here. I'm going to pause the game for a moment. Oops, that unpaused it. Um, this is our map. We are in a sector of space called the Fragmented Sector, as I've already covered. We have one little colony which is obscured by the pause uh, window thingy there. 
and we have lots of different buttons. Now, if you haven't played this game before, one of the things that you're going to want to know about is that if you hold your control key down and mouse over these, you can see what they do. We can go into statistics here and we find the statistics for our little asteroid here. This asteroid is named LWM-941. I'm going to start by renaming that and um, in honor of the person I want to introduce this game to, let's call this Grimstroid. <laughs> Sounds like a drug, but I don't care. Um, we, here we have um, power levels, air, food, water, radiation levels, and our population. This is a button for our supervisors, so we can change. We don't have any supervisors yet. They come in later in the game when you start having lots of colonies, and they are going to be immensely valuable as long as you are able to pay them. Um, basically, you can have them automate all of the construction on your different colonies to make sure that you don't have to micromanage everything. Just imagine, I've had games where I've had over 200 colonies. Try micromanaging them in a um, real-time strategy game. It's not fun. It's not fun at all. Uh, so that's supervisors done. Asteroid is secure. Um, we'll get into that later. There are various different uh, random uh, random stuff that can happen to you. And uh, I'm sure we'll see lots of those as this game progresses. First of all, we've got to go into our little colony here. We have our colony ship and one little building. First thing we need to do is actually go into SciTech. Now, instead of having to research all of your stuff, you start out with basic technology and then you can buy different technologies from SciTech, which is the science branch of TetraCorp. And uh, it's always a good idea to spend at least some of your starting money on technology which you're going to need. So I'm going to do that. We're going to have the Seismic Penetrator uh, because it's the only one that can extract the most valuable ores in this game, which is Traxium and Nexus ore. You can see here that this particular colony does not have those. But future colonies might. And it's... Um, you know, I can't stress the importance of having the ability to extract those two ores early on. Um, let's see, I'm going to explain, it works like this, you've got mines and deep bore mines at the beginning, and your regular mines will mine all of these four, selenium, astros, barium, and crystallite. The deep bore mines is needed to extract these four resources here, quasink, or quatsink, or however you pronounce that, bitanium or butanium. Corillium and Bregonium. And uh, the further down this list you go, the more valuable the resource is to sell. But we're going back into SciTech for now, because there's still stuff we need. We have ordered the Seismic Penetrator. It won't arrive until the Federal Transport arrives, which is uh, uh, where you sell your ore. Uh, so, we could always go back in here and uncheck this until it has actually arrived, and we'll get all of our money back for it. But we are going to need that, so keep that on there. We are going to have a power amplifier. This device mod modifies all generators that rely upon solar power and doubles their power output. Very useful. It's going to save you lots of money in the future. We're going to have the improved sensors. SciTech engineers will install sensors in all your asteroids, removing the need for sensor arrays. Also, buy this early so that you, you save money. 
basically uh, to save money. That is needed. We're also going to need an asteroid tracker. This device monitors and tracks all known asteroids. Their paths and speed can be displayed on the asteroid field screen. Also, something that is immensely valuable, because if you find yourself in a situation where you have an asteroid on a collision course with your colonies, it could be a good idea to see which way they are traveling, which direction, and to also see at which speed they are traveling, so that, so that you know roughly how much time you have on your hands to be able to save that colony. And speaking of saving colonies, we're also going to need an asteroid engine. Using these engines, you can specify the exact direction and speed of your asteroids, steering it from imminent collisions. Very useful. We already have the gravity nullifier, which creates a gravity field that holds the asteroid and all neighboring asteroids stationary. This can be used to the same effect, to save your asteroids from collisions. The problem with these is that they can be uh, overexerted, in which case they explode. And when that happens, you usually don't have time to build another one before the collision occurs. So, asteroid engines also immensely useful. After that, there's some military stuff that we could buy, like anti-missile pods. Those are very valuable if you plan on going to war. And you're, you are going to need several of them on each of your asteroids, or at least those neighboring your enemies, if war occurs. Screen generators are basically shield generators. We've got improved building armor, turret optimizers, photon turrets, and plasma turrets. And I'm sure you can figure out what they are and how useful they are based on their price. Uh, we also have a screen where we could build, buy sorry, uh, different types of uh, ship designs. Got the Terminator, the Fleet Battleship, and the Command Cruiser. We're not going to buy anything here for now, because we don't need it this early in the game. Same with missiles, you can have <laughs> lots of wonderful new juicy missiles. Stasis missile, for example. A new advance in temporal physics allows an entire asteroid to be frozen, incapable of action for a period of time. It's very good to have, if you want to bombard it with uh, other things. Um, basically, if you hit an asteroid that has very many uh, anti-missile turrets with a stasis missile, you can just launch loads of missiles on there and it'll calculate the damage when the stasis is lifted. Um, problem is, your missiles will also be frozen, but you can mass a ton of them on there, making sure that the anti-missile turrets can't get all of them. The nuclear missile is a multi-megaton device which will destroy most structures on targeted asteroids, as well as ships in orbit. Very fun. And the mega missile. The power unleashed by this warhead results in the destruction of an entire asteroid. Use with care. Another fun thing to note is that you can actually launch missiles at your own asteroids, should you want to do that. For now, we could buy these <laughs> to upgrade our mines. If we do that, however, we start to run a little low on cash, so we're going to save those for a later date. Now that we've done that, we have half of our starting budget left. 500,000 credits. All of that goes into construction. Almost. We're going to have a little bit in vehicles just to have it saved up there so we can buy and build scout ships later on. So, the first thing we need to do is get rid of the radiation, which we do with radiation filters. 
And each radiation filter, I believe, takes away three points of radiation. We have two radiation on this asteroid, so we're going to need only one of these. And putting it there. We're going to need a hydrophonic plant to produce food for our people. You can also see here it provisions for 300 employees. We need a air processor which provides air for 400 employees. We're not going to need that many on this, co this colony. A hydration plant which uh, extracts water from ice trapped deep within the asteroid and provides water for 400 employees. And we're going to need an environmental control unit. This facility monitors air, food and water generation and stores surplus for distribution in an emergency. Very useful. After that we're going to need a power storage to store surplus power. And we're also going to need some power generators. So we place those down there. And these solar panels, since they are so small, can be used to fill up tiny gaps like that to save space and also produce excess power for you. Um, we, we should build one of these. These ones are more expensive. I don't think I'm going to need them even though they add a little bit to uh, asteroid defenses. It's, uh, it's not really so, um, a cost that I want to uh, incur upon myself this early. We're also going to need deep ore mines to mine those delicious ores down in the ground and regular mines to mine some other delicious ores deep in the ground. There, that looks good. Another thing we're going to need is a weapons factory. Heavy security facility for the construction of all weapons and warheads. They also construct your basic ships. So we're going to place that down here. Uh, I'm not going to build a missile silo just yet. I am going to build a sensor array right in the middle there. I'm going to place a landing pod so that we can launch ships once we have built them. And a shipyard so that we can actually build them. We're also going to need a refueling depot. And we are going to need some people working on this colony. So we're going to build living quarters. Complete facilities for the comfort of 50 employees. We're going to need a pleasure dome. Right there. We're going to need a medical center. There. And we're going to need a security center. Right there. And that's pretty much it for this colony. As you can see, our basic building here can provide housing for 100 people, so 150 people is what we will start out with on this colony. And with that done, I think I will end this first video, so I hope I will see you in the next video where we will be doing lots more stuff. I'm Axiom, we're in the future, and I hope you will have fun watching this. I'm I can guarantee I'll be having fun making these. Until next time, 